quick check. Who's having fun? Who likes this? Who doesn't like this? Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> the more you understand it, the more it makes sense. And you can start to troubleshoot at other bars. Every time you go into a bar, you'll be like, oh, I know what's going on with that system because I know this stuff. So it can be satisfying. Download this for free at draftquality.org. Also, it's probably worth it to pay three bucks, five bucks, or whatever it costs to get a paper copy sent, sent to you. You need to know that thing backwards and forwards. Okay, so all the stuff that we discussed today is to achieve a couple goals, okay? When you have a draft system, the whole point is you wanna move beer from point A, a keg, to point B, the faucet, while keeping it cold, while keeping it properly carbonated. Are those two connected? Hint, hint, leading the witness. Yes, they are, big time. You need to keep a beer cold to keep it carbonated. If I open up a 22 ounce bottle or 750 and I don't finish it uh, in a night, I'll just put it back in the fridge, un uncorked, uncapped, and the cold temperature of the fridge allows it to hold on to most of its CO2. It's not quite as carbonated the next day, but it's fine. And then also you don't want to introduce off flavors. Okay, a couple easy ways to introduce off flavors. Don't clean your draft system. What do you have? You have a lot of bacterial contamination in there. So you start to produce flavors like diacetyl, the buttery flavor, or sourness in the form of lactic acid or acetic acid. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to introduce off flavors. Two essential principles to achieve these goals. Maintain IGP, ideal gauge pressure, and maintain system balance. So IGP is the amount of pressure necessary to be applied to a beer at a certain temperature Necessary to maintain the brewer's intended level of carbonation in that beer. Okay, so when you tap a keg, when you engage a keg or put it in service, you start applying pressure to it. You're adding gas to that keg to keep, it, to do two things. It pushes the beer out of the keg to actually get it to move, but it also, when you're not pouring the beer, when the faucet's not open, that gas puts pressure on it and helps keep CO2 that's in the beer from jumping out. Okay, that's equilibrium. That's what you want. So the amount of pressure necessary to be applied to a beer at a certain temperature, because if your temperature is warmer, you need to apply more pressure. If your temperature is colder, you apply less pressure. All right, so your ideal gauge pressure changes depending on the temperature of your beer. Uh, moving on to the definition, necessary to maintain the brewer's intended level of carbonation for that beer. Why does the brewer have a specific amount of carbonation in a beer? We've talked about carbonation a ton over the class, uh, or the period of this class. The point is that carbonation is an essential part of the balance of the, the tastes in the beer and the aromas. Okay, the tastes, so, so carbonation has um, bitterness, it has acidity on its own, it tastes sort of minerally, so it will bring its own tastes to the, to the party, but it also helps you balance out things like the, the sweetness of the beer, the residual sugar. It can accentuate the perception of bitterness. It can accentuate the perception of acidity. So it also brings a, tons of, a ton of aromas to, the, to your nose when you drink it. So carbonation is very, very important in beer. And so it's important to maintain the brewer's intended level of carbonation when you put a keg into service. All right, so the IGP changes based on intended carbonation level of the beer. The beer is more highly carbonated. You wanna make sure that you're holding on to more carbonation so that ideal gauge pressure goes up because you need to add more pressure. You need to apply more gas to that beer to keep the gas that's in it in the beer. So uh, the temperature of the beer matters. We talked about that. The lower the temperature of the beer, the more soluble the gas is. When uh, you have gas in a beer, it's dissolved in there. That's why when you look at a bottle of beer, hold it up to the light before you've opened it, you don't see bubbles in the beer. It's because it's dissolved. It's part of the mixture in that beer. The lower the temperature of the liquid, the more soluble that gas is. The higher the temperature of the liquid, the less soluble the gas is. And then we also have to worry about elevation above sea level the ambient air pressure. So there's less air in Denver in the atmosphere because they're a mile higher up than we are here in San Francisco. So they have less, uh, less pressure being added to the beer to begin with. We have more, we can't do anything about that. We can't take that, the air pressure out, but that air pressure is helping to keep more CO2 in the, in the beer here than it is in, in Denver. Okay, so here's the table. This is most of what we're gonna look at today is straight from the, the DBQM, the Draft Beer Quality Manual. So this is in your quality manual. So if your draft system is being kept at 38 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a fairly standard draft system operating temperature, 38 degrees, and it's a 2.5. Say you're pushing Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, that's probably 2.5 volumes of CO2 at 38 
degrees Fahrenheit, you want 11.3 pounds per square inch of applied pressure. That's the ideal gauge pressure of that beer at that temperature. Okay, so if the ideal gauge pressure is 11.3 PSI and you apply 11.3 PSI of CO2, you are maintaining the beer's ideal gauge pressure. The beer's not going to lose CO2 and it's not going to gain CO2. That's good. You want that. Okay, if you apply too much pressure, if you apply more pressure than the ideal gauge pressure of that beer, that beer's going to soak up that CO2, the extra CO2. It's going to get overcarbonated. You don't want to do that. The opposite is also true. If you apply less CO2 than the, the beer's ideal gauge pressure, then the beer's going to lose CO2. Okay, you don't want that either. So you need to apply the amount of pressure of CO2 that is the ideal gauge pressure of that beer. And if your resistance downstream of the beer is also 11.3 pounds of resistance, then your system is in balance, and that's good too. The beer's not going to pour too foamy. It's going to pour two, two ounces per second, and it's not going to gain or lose CO2 in the keg. Okay. 